Song. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 1433, 1433, and I am Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley. Ton today. We hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer. We get to the segment called Ain't Life Grand. There's some crazy things going on in this world, but all in all, you have to say, Ain't Life Grand. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because I survived the triple digit temperatures yesterday. That was not fun, and Basil the Boxer did not like Mike's it. Mike's Daily Podcast. Yeah, it was kind of a struggle for him. He was huffing and puffing and panting. But I think I have something that I can't dim. My light is my light. It's so bright. And it, I want something just like this. Coldplay. It's, they're not out of sight. Mike's Daily Podcast. They're, they were a has, they're a has been band. No, they, they're still around. They're good. Mike's Chris Martin. Daily Chris Morton. Podcast. And that's about it. Yeah. For my song. But on to another musician. Walter Becker died. Steely Dan. But did it did it. The beginning of Really in the Years, his guitar riff will forever live on. And all the other great songs. He and Donald Fagan. Donald Fagan? Is that right? Dan Fagan? Donald Fagan. Something Fagan. I'm not up on my Steely Dan at the moment. I apologize, but Walter Becker. Great guy. As these two people that walked in will attest to. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman! And this is John Deere, the engineer. I have several Steely Dan albums on it. Do you have uh, Asia? 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 Yes, I have that. And here's today's podcast picture. I have Pretzel Logic. Ricky, don't lose that number. You don't want to hurt nobody else. Yeah, it sounds something like that. Podcast picture today is from Lake Chabot. Or to Chabot, to those of you who are not natives or residents of the Podcaster Valley area. But yes, I hope you enjoy that picture there. I took that on Thursday, I think it was, with Basil the Boxer. We were walking past, and for a long time their dock wasn't working, and now it's working. So there was a little romantic couple rowing along. Young couple, and I got a picture of it. You can see it at mikesdailypodcast.com, where also you can help out the show through the Amazon link and do that. Have you done that? Mike Matthews. What is it, Shelly? You haven't said my name yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, look who it is. It's Shelly Shuhart. That's right, Mike Matthews. It's Shelly Shuhart, the draft supervisor. And I love shopping on Amazon. What do you buy on Amazon? Everything that I need. Oh, that's good. Wait, but you have a gift shop. You don't resell the stuff you get on Amazon at your gift shop, do you? Maybe. Okay. Well, there you go. Little secret has been exposed here at Cafe Anyway and Mike's Daily Podcast. Taylor Swift's song. Sorry to go from Walter Becker to Taylor Swift. That's sacrilege, I know. But Walter Becker, oh, okay. Many musicians are crying today about that. And they're crying that Taylor Swift came out with a new song. Look What You Made Me Do, I think is what it's called. And the video has her basically killing off all of her old video personas. And that made me think about people that look in a humorous way at their personas or other personas. Well, the one I thought about that really sprung to mind was um, George Harrison did that with the Beatles with the song When We Was Fab and the video to that kind of discussed that uh, there was also who else kind of poked at their themselves in, in music videos there were a couple that I thought of in the 80s that poked fun at not themselves but other people and other music videos being made at the time you had David Lee Roth when he did the cover of I'm Just a Gigolo, that video included him running an MTV-like network 
or being a host on a show on that and he's walking around the studio watching other music videos being made and he like pushes Billy Idol into a Tesla coil or something who gets electrocuted and he does something wacky to Willie Nelson who was popular at the time and so there was also Phil Collins and I mentioned Ricky Don't Lose That Number by Steely Dan um, Phil Collins had a song called Billy Don't Lose uh, Billy, uh, Billy Don't You Lose My Number And in that video He is being pitched uh, The music video Who is going to make the Who has the best concept for the music video For Billy Don't You Lose My Number And several people Come in and they end up Doing sort of a parody Of all the music videos that were popular At the time including Elton John's I'm Still Standing." And the cars you might think And they do like a western one But thinking about people that poke fun at their own persona I know some people have done it in the hip hop world In the R&B world I can't really think of any at the moment But Taylor Swift is sort of a tongue in cheek artist And I think that's what helps her thrive And gets people interested in her So but I just can't think of anybody at the moment. If you can, please call me, 336-MM-DAILY, 336-MM-DAILY. You can also text me at that number. Texting charges apply. But, yeah, I would love to hear what you would think, what you think about that. And, because Taylor Swift is definitely not the first person to do it, but she definitely is getting a lot of attention for it now. And the station that I work for on the weekend, the music station, is playing that song now. And production-wise, because I didn't really listen to the song, and when you you know hear it on the radio, you actually listen to it. You're not being distracted by the bevy of images. Oh my gosh, there's so many images going on in her video to that song. And the song is interesting. It's sort of a, it, it kind of wants to go into this dance club kind of thing. It's almost kind of a rap feel to it. Kind of a hip hop. Dance thing going on But it's still very Taylor Swift And it has an interesting mix of Different styles going on It's not my favorite of hers But what is your favorite of hers Mike? I like style But Hey I'm all about If you're a musician Or if you're a pop artist Reinventing yourself and doing new things But boy I know on the tip I, you know, I'm trying to think of Madonna If she ever poked fun of all her She had a myriad of personas throughout her career And I don't think she did I can't think of any videos she did Where she poked fun at herself Oh, you had Michael Jackson uh, Leave Me Alone was the song And in that she, He kind of, he had these It was all animated And there were all kinds of things That people were saying about him Like the he had the elephant, elephant man remains that he owned, and the, in animated form, it kind of makes fun of all that. So that may be one possible example. At any rate, the other thing I wanted to mention was this King Cole of San Leandro. San Leandro, I don't live too far away from San Leandro, and King Cole. Was this uh, Like What was he a, a Urban planner He helped plan Spokane King Cole Here we go uh, He was Here I'm looking at his obituary right now He was a pivotal And much loved figure in the history of Spokane in the Inland Northwest I heard about him actually on C-SPAN As I watch a lot of C-SPAN on the weekend He, uh, let's see the, He passed away in uh, 2010 He was 88 He was the president of Expo 74 in Spokane Expo The Expo in 74 was huge in Spokane It was like the biggest world expo ever done In a small town or a, a city the size of Spokane Everybody, every other expo was in a much bigger city um, He was born in Grand Junction He grew up in Oakland uh, He Let's see 
He began a career in urban development in California, most notably in San Leandro, where he worked until 1963 when he brought his family of 10 to Spokane. He was invited to the region by Spokane Unlimited, a consortium of downtown business interests, as executive secretary of that organization. The goal was to arrest and reverse the decline of Spokane Central Business District, a phenomenon that was occurring throughout the country at that time. It wasn't long in his tenure with Spokane Unlimited before he began to incubate an idea that a consulting firm had planted to take Spokane's downtown a quantum leap forward. That idea became the reality of Expo 74. King Cole, a marial soul, acted as the spearhead for this outrageous quest. Uh, his real skill, skill was his ability to get people to come together to achieve the impossible. After the fair was over, he began a new career as a consultant to other communities hosting large-scale events, including Knoxville, Tennessee's Expo in 1982 and the Vancouver, British Columbia World Fair of 1986, the year I graduated high school. King Cole was as much at home with a shovel and a yard of concrete as he was in the company of many, of any company CEO or country's president, king or prime minister. He spoke several languages. Interesting. So yeah, very. So they have a th- whole thing about that on C-SPAN today. And there you go, San Leandro, a little town right next to, right next to Oakland. And Yeah Help change the world Okay I'm going to get to the segment called Ain't Life Grand But also Don't forget you can help out the show Through the PayPal If you donate You'll get a special greeting From all the Cafe Anyway characters And a personalized MP3 for the You can see all the past podcast pictures as well At MikesDailyPodcast.com See a bunch of pictures Of yours truly And interesting scenes That I have photographed Over the years Throughout the world And that's all at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Okay, here we go Life Grand 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 Basil the Boxer also featured In the pictures that you can find At (laughs) Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Now, on to Trump. This is a fine-tuned machine. Asked if he'd attack North Korea, he says, we'll see. North Korea claimed today a perfect success for its most powerful nuclear test so far, a further step in the development of weapons capable of striking anywhere in the U.S. President Donald Trump asked if he would attack the North, said, we'll see. The latest provocation from the isolated communist country reinforces the danger facing America. Trump has said earlier in a series of tweets, adding that talk of appeasement is pointless. And Putin also said to Trump today that his rhetoric is pointless. They only understand one thing, Trump wrote without elaboration as he prepared to meet later with his national security team. It was the first nuclear test since Trump took office in January. They've been doing a lot of ballistic missile testing. Hours later, after attending church in Washington, it's a national day of prayer today, the president made his we'll see comment in response to a question from reporters. The precise strength of the explosion described by state-controlled media in North Korea as a hydrogen bomb has yet to be determined, although the Richter scales went off the scales and they pretty much are sure that it was something of that intensity. South Korea's weather agency said the artificial earthquake caused by the explosion was five times to six times stronger than the tremors generated by the North's previous five such tests. It shook buildings in China and in Russia. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was calling counterparts in Asia and Trump's Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, uh, he was... He said he was putting together proposed new sanctions for Trump to consider that would seek to cut off trade with North Korea. China saying that uh, they're going to block, possibly block on the table, this possibility of blocking, uh, creating an oil embargo and gas embargo to um, North Korea. So we'll see what's going on. 
later on this week. President Trump has weathered a dramatic August recess and is heading into a critical September legislative stretch that is expected to test his leadership and ability to uh, to um, his ability of the GOP controlled Congress to deliver on longstanding campaign promises. Oh yeah, the government shutdown and all that possibly on the table. Trump's polling numbers dipped in August, but appear to have stabilized. The president is in better shape now that he only has, he was only two weeks, oh, two weeks ago is better than, it's better now than two weeks ago when his job approval bottomed out after his response to the racially charged protests in Charlottesville. And it provoked furious political blowback. Throughout August, the White House was racked by turnover and internal strife. Among Trump's top aides and cabinet, Trump also feuded bitterly with the GOP leaders that he needs to pass his agenda, a drama that underscored the fact that the White House and Republicans have yet to put a major legislative victory on the board. He will enter September, a month his former chief strategist Stephen Bannon dubbed the meat grinder for his gaunt- for its gauntlet of thorny political issues. With a new team in place and a new slate of priorities, beginning with the push for Hurricane Harvey disaster relief and tax reform. This according to The Hill. Speaking of Houston and Hurricane Harvey, Texans flocked to Sunday worship services, service, services pressed ahead with door-to-door serv- searches for frail and elderly survivors and accelerated an exodus from evacuation centers where some had sheltered for more than a week after the most powerful hurricane to strike the continental U.S. in more than a decade. As tens of thousands in Houston and its environs spent the Labor Day holiday weekend cleaning out homes from which storm Harvey's waters had receded, the city's mayor exhorted his constituents to move ahead as quickly as possible towards some semblance of normal in the nation's fourth largest city. I'm encouraging people, he said, get up and let's get going. He said, I'll meet the press. Looking ahead to the Tuesday start of the work week, he said, most of the city is dry and I'm saying, if you can open, he said to the local businesses, let's open up and let's get started. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's daily podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Mont 10, wherever we are. Well, my friend, I think that's going to wrap it up for today's show. I'm so tired. I didn't get any sleep. It was too hot. I tried sleeping downstairs, which is slightly underground. And Basil the Boxer did not want to be down there. And so he's stirring around. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. He's upstairs walking around. What's he doing up there? So I go up there where it's still hot as an oven And he's walking around And finally got him to just lay down I put a fan on him You know, it's tough It's a dog's life The dog's life is not always the best life But I made it the best I could for him last night So today a little bit cooler The next day will be a little bit cooler And that's Hopefully the Bay Area will cool off a little bit more But if you are in a hot spot Stay in the air conditioning If you have it I don't It sucks So On that note Outside here of Cafe Anyway Where it is hot And it's sweltering I'll wrap up the show Next show We're going to have Benita The disgruntled fiddle player And the brewmaster Thank you for listening today It's been a hoot Enjoy your Labor Day too We'll try and do a Labor Day show for you Which will involve me doing some labor To do the show How ironic Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced And performed by Mike Matthews His podcast is super easy to find Download or listen to his show And read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com Email Mike now At mikesdailypodcast At gmail.com See you 